Hey guys, today I will be reviewing my $2100 RTX 3080 custom build that I received 6 weeks ago from CyberPowerPC. In this video I'll be going over into detail about my experience with owning this PC over the last 6 weeks, and I'll also be going into depth about how each component in the PC has been performing for me, and tips in case anyone else is in the market for a pre-built custom PC or building your own PC. I have nothing but great things to say about the company CyberPowerPC and recommend them to everyone, especially if you're trying to get your hands on a graphics card in 2021. This video is not sponsored by CyberPower PC and these are all my honest thoughts and opinions about the company and the custom build they built for me. I'm a person that loves building my own PC but I went to CyberPower PC because of their great reputation, lots of customization options, graphics card availability, and good prices. I have an unboxing video of this PC where I go into depth about my experience ordering my custom build from CyberPower PC, what the shipping process was like, and shows me setting up the PC for the very first time. I also have an FPS benchmark video that shows the average FPS and temperatures in about like eight different games like Cold War, Warzone, Cyberpunk 2077. There will be links to these videos in the description down below. Also, let me know about your thoughts of CyberPower PC in the comment section down below. Are you thinking about buying a PC, already ordered one, or maybe you're using a CyberPower PC already? If you would like tips on how you should spec out your computer on CyberPower PC's website, the best way to get in contact with me is over Discord. I am actually the co-owner of a Discord channel called King's Family, which already has 700 members in the first month we created it. You can find me in the voice channels pretty much every day, and you can message me anytime in the chat. We also have a section to apply as a partner if you are a content creator, streamer, Discord server owner, etc. We have giveaways every month and random giveaway drops. We currently have giveaways going on for $200, $50, and Discord Nitro. Some of these giveaways are ending very soon, so act fast. I'll put a link in the description. What I like about CyberPower PC is that they don't overcharge you for your build and always have tons of promotions going on that you can take advantage of. They did a pretty good job at making my custom build look great and even had everything cable managed really nicely. I never had to configure any settings to get the most of my PC, like going into the BIOS or anything like that. My PC took about two months to deliver, which may seem like a long time to some of you, but it was definitely worth the wait. I'll quickly go over the specs of the custom build I ordered and then I'll go into more detail about each one. So I have an R. Aros RTX 3080 10GB i7 10700KF, Cooler Master 240mm liquid cooler, 16GB of 3200MHz G-Skill RAM, Asus Tough Gaming Z490 Plus motherboard with Wi-Fi 6, Gigabyte 850 watt modular power supply, Fantex Eclipse P400A ATX case, a 500 gigabyte Western Digital M.2 drive, and a 2 terabyte Seagate hard drive. The most important part of this PC is definitely the Aros RTX 3080 Master, which is extremely hard to come by due to the graphics card shortages. This GPU has a lot of cool like RGB effects and a cool LCD display that can be controlled using the RGB Fusion 2.0 app that's made by Gigabyte. The performance this graphics card is capable of is absolutely insane. I have a Gigabyte 1440p 170Hz monitor, and I've been playing a lot of Black Ops Cold War, which actually came free with this graphics card. I'm able to hit like like about 200 fps on average on 1440p with everything set to the max except like turning off ray tracing when i actually turn ray tracing on to ultra i hit about 150 fps on average which is really good to be honest keep in mind this is while setting the dlss to quality mode which is a feature that only rtx cards have that can improve fps significantly i only recommend using dlss if you're using like uh, 1440p quality or higher or if you're trying to improve your fps if you have a lower tier rtx RTX card like the RTX 2060 for example. I was trying my best to decide between the RTX 3060 Ti, 3070, and 3080. I knew I would definitely save money if I went for the lesser two options, but I thought if I just get the 3080, I won't have to upgrade for a very long time and it will give me the best experience with my 1440p 170Hz monitor after watching a bunch of other people's benchmarks on YouTube. After looking at the results of my FPS benchmark video I made, it made it very clear that every game I have played on this computer runs amazingly. I can't wait to throw even more games at this PC to see how it performs. So far I've been playing a lot of Cold War, Warzone, Apex Legends, Valheim, Cyberpunk 2077, which are all games I put in my FPS benchmark video I posted about a month ago. Temperatures have been pretty great with this graphics card and I normally see it maxing at about 75 degrees Celsius if the GPU is being maxed out for a very long time. When the GPU is not in use, the fans will actually turn off, which is actually a really nice feature. I never expected to actually receive the 
the Eros variant of the RTX 3080. It was a really nice surprise, to be honest. When I ordered the PC, it didn't give me any specific options for the models of the GPU. All it said was the RTX 3080. For the processor, I got the i7-10700KF, which has 8 cores with hyper-threading, which makes it actually a total of 16 threads. This processor has been like amazing for gaming, video editing, 3D rendering. I'm able to work with 4K 60fps footage in Adobe Premiere flawlessly with no slowdowns at all. This is a major improvement from my old custom-built PC that I built 4-5 to five years ago. I have also used 3D rendering programs like Cinema 4D, and the rendering times are insanely fast fast with 16 threads. This new processor is so much better compared to the i5-6600K quad-core processor that I had in my old PC. I have tons of videos that I posted of my old PC if you guys are curious. I'll put a link to a playlist with all the videos from my old PC in the description down below. Keep in mind, if you get a processor that has 16 threads like I did, most games will not actually be able to take full advantage of all the cores yet, but if you're planning on multitasking like streaming for example, this PC has allowed me to play games and live stream at the same time with very minimal loss to performance. I actually started up a Twitch channel recently and I already have about 150 followers within the first month of streaming. Also, I haven't publicly talked about my Twitch on YouTube yet, so this is the first time you guys are hearing about this unless you have been part of my Discord channel. This computer makes streaming and playing games from the same computer super easy with all the processing power it's capable of with the i7-10700KF and the NVIDIA RTX 3080. It has made it so I'm spending less time dealing with performance issues while streaming and more time just enjoying playing the games and interacting with the Twitch community. Obviously, having a separate dedicated computer would be the next step if I end up becoming a bigger live streamer, but for now, this will work great. I could always use my old PC with an i5-6600K and GTX 1066 gig and put an internal capture card if I want to go down that road. I might want to upgrade the processor in that computer first because it's only a quad core. With this custom build, I was able to easily reach affiliate status in a week from everyone's support, and I've had a lot of fun at the same time. I make an effort to be very interactive with my viewers and I try to play games where others can play and join with me. I would love you guys to come and join the fun and even play with me during some of my streams. My Twitch is the same as my name on YouTube and I'll also be putting a link in the description so you can follow me there. For the liquid cooler, I went with the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240L, which has a 240mm radiator with ARGB lighting on the water block and the fans attached to the radiator that can be controlled in the software. The fans on the radiator do get audibly loud when I am rendering a video or 3D project, but nothing crazy. This is only because when rendering video or rendering 3D projects, the CPU usage is being maxed to 100% at all times, and the liquid cooler is having to work hard to keep it cool. Cool. While gaming, the CPU never maxes out for long periods of time and I never hear the fans on the radiator have to kick in at all. I wish the RGB on this liquid cooler had the ability to have multiple colors on it at the same time just like my case fans, but this is really not that big of a deal. I might recommend getting a better liquid cooler if you don't want to hear the audible fan noise from the radiator fans, but other than that, this is not really an issue for me. For the RAM, I went with 16 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z RGB at 3200 megahertz, which has a custom ARGB lighting which can be controlled through software like AuraSync and others. I paid CyberPower PC about $45 extra to upgrade my RAM from the standard, I think it was like Crucial Ballistic Sport 3000 they were offering at the time. This was more of a personal preference for me because I wanted the ability to customize the RGB. So far I have really been enjoying the cool effects you can do with the lighting and I'm planning on buying two more sticks of identical RAM in the future. But for now, 16 gigabytes is plenty enough for my needs but i will admit having four sticks of ram with full rgb does look really nice for the motherboard i went with the asus tough gaming z490 plus that has wi-fi 6 on board this is a very nice looking motherboard featuring ARGB along the right side of the motherboard that can be changed in software. I'm a big fan of this motherboard. One of the main things I was looking for in a motherboard was having onboard Wi-Fi. This board also has an external antenna that looks like a shark fin. You can even move it around to get a stronger Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signal as well. I know I can easily just put an internal network card in my PC, but it's nice not having to have an extra additional PCIe card taking up a lot of extra space in my case. I also like the amount of USB ports that are included with the motherboard. It also has two slots for M.2 drives, so I have extra room for expansion in the future. I actually recently purchased a Wi-Fi 6 router and made an unboxing slash review video on it. I will put a link to that in the description down below. 
The power supply I selected is a Gigabyte 850 watt fully modular and 80 plus gold. I paid about $50 extra to upgrade from the Apavia 800 watt that was selected by default. This gave me peace of mind because I do not trust Apavia and their brand. I had a lot of people telling me that even the Gigabyte option might not have been a great choice either, but I have had a great experience with it. I have never had any weird shutdowns or anything that people have been warning me about. If you are thinking about getting a power supply, I know this one definitely has worked for me and I recommend it 100%. Also, the fact it's a modular power supply is super nice for cable management. They also left all the cables sealed in a bag and put everything in the motherboard box, which was super nice of them. For the case, I went with the Fantex Eclipse P400A. I'm going to be honest, I wish I went with a different case after looking at some of the other options CyberPower PC has to offer, but that is entirely my own fault. Also, I didn't realize this case only comes with one default black case fan in the back of the case. I ended up having to purchase a few case fans online because I didn't realize mine would come with any. There is also an easy way to avoid this. Make sure the case you select specifies in the name of it that it comes with a certain amount of case fans. For example, if it says included 6x case fans or 3x case fans, then you will be good. I wish I picked out a case that was more transparent along the front of the case. Like I said, entirely my own fault because I picked the case. CyberPower actually did do an amazing job at making everything look nice and neat in the case I selected. The fans I ended up purchasing were as a 5-pack of 120mm RGB case fans with a fan control hub for about $40. I wish I would have purchased fans from CyberPower PC, but I just didn't realize the amount of fans that came with it. For storage, I have a 500GB Western Digital M.2 SSD, which has been working very well for me. I actually got a pretty good deal from CyberPower PC at the time. I believe I got it for free on the condition I buy a hard drive with it, so I went with a 2TB Seagate, which has been very nice for storing my big games and recordings. I install all my programs on the SSD and the games I play the most. I actually have the same exact SSD in my other PC, so I knew it would work well with my new one. Don't forget to like and comment on this video. Also make sure to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube and follow me on Twitch. Make sure to join the King's Family Discord channel and don't forget to participate in the many giveaways that we have going on. Thanks for watching and don't forget to check all the links in the description I talked about throughout the video.